Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak. Here. Councilmember Ray Rauer. Here. Councilmember Novak. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Armstrong. Here. Councilmember Carlson. Mayor Cook. Here. <coughs> Two absent, Novak and Carlson. Thank you. All right, why don't we adopt this evening's agenda? So moved. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Griscoviak uh, to adopt the agenda. Is there any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, very first thing on our agenda this evening is the presentation and adoption of resolution 23-45, accepting a donation from Alina Health Mercy Hospital. And representatives are here to present the donation. So if you would like to come up to the dais and well, if, all right. Well, otherwise, I can meet you out front with a mic, but I'll give you the dais to work from. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Mayor, Council, um, I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, I'm glad you're to introduce Jess and Sarah from Alina Health, part of the Mercy Hospital system. And uh, they were very instrumental in designing and solidifying the grant that uh, our donation to help build Mercy, uh, Mercy Park uh, for uh, challenged and uh, special needs kids. Uh, this, we worked together for about a year now and we met what, about four or five times and um, through their help and uh, through the committee uh, we were able to uh, come up with a pretty nice playground that we'll be installing here in July or August of this year. The playground uh, will be retrofitted for some of the uh, parts that are on the playground. It will have a rubber surface as we do at Lions Park. And uh, we'll have some uh, components on the playground that uh, will help enhance uh, special needs and challenge kids and um, autism. The part of the project is uh, the fact that uh, um, they are working on uh, next year maybe adding on to this playground uh, another phase uh, to be able to uh, uh, hit the benchmark of two to five-year-olds with special needs and challenges. So I'm looking forward to hopefully working with them again for another year and being able to uh, come up with another donation or contribution to the playground to enhance Mercy Park. How is it Craig Malm got out of not coming tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I think I said, we should have had Craig come. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're just kind of used to seeing him at everything. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to step up to the mic before you. That's what sure. you um, I just am so thankful and pleased that the city and Greg was willing to, to hear our request to um, add things to the park that they were already going to be doing this year anyway. So we really appreciate that. So we, we really enjoyed partnering with them to, to come up with a really nice playground for the kids in the community. Awesome. And would you introduce yourself? I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah, I'm Sarah Rohde. I'm the manager for Courage Kenny Kids. And we actually have a clinic right adjacent to the park where we treat children with all kinds of abilities and disabilities um, in pediatric OT, speech, well, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and physical therapy. So we have, well, probably 100 to 125 kids coming into the clinic every day. And this will be a great place for them to utilize during therapy sessions or before and after therapy sessions with their siblings and the friends that they make. So we're really, really excited about the opportunity. It looks really cool. It looks, yeah. the, the picture looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Is there anything else? We... All right. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Oh. Mr. Oh. Mr. Go ahead. I'd just like to make a comment to say thank you. I mean, that, that's great. As you know, we're, there's some, um, this is open to the public. Uh, there's a new apartment building going on across the street up there. There's going to be some kids over there pop potentially. So I just wanted to thank you. Thanks to the, park, the Parks Commission for the collaboration. I just think it's a great addition to the city. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. If we no can have um, every, 
everybody introduce yourself oh, and just sure. yeah. since you're um, here let's make might sure as well. that, yeah, um, I'm Jessica Jacklich I'm one of the pediatric physical therapists who works at the clinic I've been with Courage County Kids now for 20 years mm. and I think my giant pipe dream has always been to see playgrounds become more inclusive overall and looking at kids of not only physical mobility challenges, but sensory challenges, and wanting to bring the community and kids together in a place where everybody wants to play together, where it's fun for everybody. And we were even talking about things where people of all ages can come and enjoy this park. So it's, you know, if someone wants to go with a grandparent who maybe has mobility challenges, or someone wants to come down from the hospital and enjoy some fresh air and visit with family, that that would be a place that, that they could go as well. So we're very excited to see it kind of getting off the ground and, and running. And we have, like I said, I'm, I'm a dreamer. We have some plans mm -hmm. coming up, so hopefully we can make it happen. That is awesome. Great. That looks great. Uh, Mr. Engel, you did bring one of those big cardboard checks, didn't you? I was hoping to, but it didn't <laughs> work out tonight. If we need to do that, we will. <laughs> no, no, that's right. We can accept the money without, you know, one of those. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much. Yes, and we look forward to a future partnership and whatever else we can do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would like to make a motion to adopt Resolution 23-45 accepting the donation from Alina Mercy, or Alina Health Mercy Hospital for playground equipment at Mercy Park. Second. second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Ray Rauer. Is there a discussion on that? Ms. Ray, I just will echo what um, Council Member Griscoviak said. It's fabulous. I mean, to have the business and um, city partnership to work together and it's the right place for this and it can help the kids who are there um, every day. And so those, and if we can do more across all of our parks, it would be great, but I think this is a great um, place to start with. And so we appreciate your support. Mr. Mayor? Tell us where we're yeah, going just, a, just kind of echoing the echoing the echoing. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a father of three kids and when number three came along, I was in charge of number two and I, I'm so glad that park was there because I had I had two kids that were five and three and they didn't want to sit there in mom's room doing nothing. So <laughs> that park came in handy. So yeah. thank you. Mr. Mayor. That's for rear rower. I'll keep it short. Thank you for the <laughs> collaboration and thank you for um, adding your expertise to the project. We really um, appreciate those skills going into it. Awesome. And next time we're going to expect Craig to be here, though, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly we want to see if you got a haircut yet. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is the approval of the minutes from the March 7th meeting. It looks like everybody was there. Move to approve said minutes. Second. Motion by Ray Rauer and a second by Griscoviak. Is there any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, we have three items on our, con on our consent agenda this evening. And the first one is to approve nominations to the Coon Creek Watershed District Board of Managers. People responded this year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, we have five letters of interest. The five candidates include Kirsten Stack, Scott Storick, Roger Johnson, Aaron Lind, and Lonnie Lincoln. All candidates are Coon Rapids residents interested in serving on this board. Um, and then we've reviewed the summary of the candidates that's attached. Uh, the Anoka County Board of Commissioners is the entity responsible for the appointment of the positions However, the City Council may make recommendations for the Anoka County Board to consider, and that's what we're doing here. We're going to recommend, or let's see, I'm sorry. We are going to nominate the five stated candidates to the Anoka County Board for consideration of appointment to the Coon Creek Watershed District Board of Managers. Next item on our consent agenda, which is item four on this evening's agenda, is to set a public hearing date for miscellaneous assessments 2023-1. Uh, the Board of Adjustment and Appeals is expected to conduct this hearing on May 4th and make a recommendation to the City Council at the May 16th Council meeting. Staff will incorporate the process in the required mailing to the property owner 
and these assessments include services provided to taxpayers, in most cases code enforcement violations. The terms of repayment are determined by the amount being assessed, and the proposed assessments are categorized by the number of years to be assessed and the interest rate recommended. Um, so we're looking to adopt resolution 23-44, miscellaneous assessment, declaring the cost to be assessed, ordering preparation of the proposed assessment roll, and ordering the public hearing for April 4th, 2023 on the proposed assessment roll. And the next item on, and the last item on our consent agenda is to approve a new singular wireless AT&T lease amendment on the Foley Water Tower. The city and new singular wireless, which is AT&T, entered into a lease agreement on May 11th, 2011 to allow AT&T to lease space on the Foley Boulevard water tower for telecommunication purposes. AT&T is in the process of refurbishing its directional antennas on the water tower. In that process, AT&T desires, desires the ability to place 12 directional antenna on the water tower. Currently, the lease allows for nine such antenna City staff does not object to the additional antenna as long as they meet all requirements under the current lease and city ordinances. As consideration for the added antennas, AT&T will pay the city an additional $6,000 in rent per year. Under the current lease, AT&T's rent in 2023 is $39,256.36. So we're looking to authorize approval and execution of the First Amendment to the lease agreement with new singular wireless PCS LLC. And that is our consent agenda. Your Honor. Council Member Ray Rauer. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Ray Rauer and a second by Griscoviak. Is there any discussion or questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, we are up to item six. Consider adoption of Ordinance 2279, amending Chapter 5-200, Alcoholic Beverages. This was introduced at the last meeting, um, and this was kind of just cleaning up our license types. Uh, we were licensing public drinking place and bottle clubs, and those are no longer a type of license that the city issues and has not issued in a very long time. So does anybody have any questions or need further information on this? So Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2279, amending Chapters 5-203, 5-208, 5-209, 5-210, 5-211, as it relates to public drinking places and bottle clubs and authorized summary publication of the ordinance. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Armstrong. Is there any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. <clears throat> and next is to consider adoption of Ordinance 2280, amending Chapter 5-2000 under local gambling. And this was also cleaning up an ordinance. Uh, the staff learned that the use of the word electronic in the city's code was in conflict with the state gambling laws and causes confusion when new premises permits are processed. Um, so we're... Let's see, what are we doing? Uh, this proposed change would remove the word electronic but not change the intent to continue to allow two of the five locations to be pull tab dispensing locations only. Ms. Lensmeyer, is there anything you want to add to that or? Mr. Mayor? No. Nope. Yes. As you read, is perfect. Thank right, you. Know. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, anybody have any questions of Ms. Lensmeyer? Your Honor. Council Member Ray Rower. I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2280, amending Chapter 5 2005 as it relates to premises permits. Second. Motion by Ray Rower and a second by Griscoviak. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. We're up to item 8, <coughs> which is to consider. Resolution 23-46, reallocating the 2022 general fund budget and amending the 2022 and 2023 budgets. Ms. Hansen, you want to cover that? I will. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So 
City Council. So before you this evening are uh, just kind of a couple of housekeeping items related to 2022 as we finished up the year. Um, our legal level of authority for budgetary purposes as uh, expenditure category within each activity. So we're recommending um, some budget reappropriations within the general fund that net to zero. Um, those are listed in the resolution. Uh, in addition, we have uh, carry forwards in the general fund of 9,400. These are for purchases that weren't made but uh, at, by the end of the fiscal year, but are we're on order. Um, and then 5,653,885 in other funds, mostly for projects that are, we're still in progress at the end of the year. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, anybody have any questions for Ms. Hansen? Mr. Mayor. House Member Griscoviak. I just have one question on line item number one, which is noted as general fund to the retirement insurance fund in the amount of $350,000. Uh, the rest of them, I think, are pretty clear carry over for work that wasn't done. But could you expand on that one a little bit for us, please? Are you, ref Council Member Griswold, are you referring to the transfer? Yes. Did I jump ahead? Yeah, it's the next item. Oh, sorry about that. I thought, I'm not sure where you're looking. Nope, but sorry about I'm that. I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for letting me bury myself on that one. <laughs> Oh, not that deep. We'll, we'll get back to it. Okay. <laughs> She'll be ready next time. I was yeah. ready, as you yeah. can see. <laughs> yeah. too, too ready. Okay, thank you. I'm good. All right. Was there any other questions from Ms. Hansen on that? No. All right. So, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 23-46, reallocating the 2022 general fund budget and amending the 22 and 2023 budgets. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Ray Rauer. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, I just, Geisler? I would just say that, you know, I, I appreciate the diligence that our finance team does in making sure that, you know, everything is balanced and we're working and, you know, yes, things get on order and we know that things haven't been shipping. And so to be able to keep everything clean and nice and tidy and so it's just more housekeeping, but I appreciate the, the attention to the detail keeping us in good fiscal standing. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, and that motion carries. Item nine is to consider resolution 23-47, authorizing the transfer of funds. And Ms. Anson, I predict you're gonna have a question on this one. <laughs> Go ahead and lay it out. Thank you. Um, so included in the resolution is a list of transfers for fiscal year 2022. Uh, we're coming for you to ask for formal approval of these um, as listed out um, to address Council Member Griscoliet's question. So the first line is a general fund to retirement insurance fund for 350,000. Um, so this is to help fund future retirement obligations related to police and fire um, personnel, uh, I believe up to a certain year, any employees are qualify for post-employment benefits. And so we do a long range projection um, based on what that's going to that need will be and then making sure that so we have a try to keep a flat transfer so that we're not having these huge um, ups and downs or that we don't come up with all of a sudden needing to fund a large amount in the future. Mayor Council, if I and if I could elaborate yeah. on that a little bit. So up until around 2007 for the police officers unions and somewhere around 2012, 13 for the fire union, mm -hmm. um, once an officer or firefighter reached the age of 55, they were eligible for retirement. So there's that gap between 55 and 65 in which they would get you know, federal benefits. Um, until those years, uh, the city would pay the employer portion of health insurance between 55 and 65. Those at those years were negotiated out of the contract in exchange for a higher pay and accelerated pay scale for new employees. But any employee who was hired before that date is still eligible for that. So we have a lot of both police and fire members who are still eligible for those benefits. Obviously, that's part of health insurance. And so we're paying for those retirees. Those costs go up significantly each year, uh, but eventually they're being phased out through attrition. Um, it just takes quite a bit of time. So that number over time will be less and less theoretically because we'll have fewer and fewer people who are eligible for that benefit. 
But thank you for that. But I thought my, my question was more is, wasn't this budgeted in 2022, right, at a, at a set amount? This just seems like a big transfer to cover. Okay. Why, why is that? The 350000 was the budgeted amount for 2022. Well, it was the budgeted it, yes. amount. It's just held in the general fund. We budget it, levy for it, and it's transferred to a separate account to yeah. pay for that retirement benefit. Okay, oh. that's that. that so you should have started with that. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I thought you wanted the big. That's good. <laughs> but now you know more than you wanted. Okay. <laughs> okay. The more you know. Okay. Does that answer your question? That does now? clarify okay. for me. Thank you. All right, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Anybody else have any questions of Ms. Hansen on this? We need a motion um, to get out of here. Your Honor. Uh, Councilor Brewer. I make a motion to adopt Resolution 23-47, authorizing the transfer of funds for 2022. Second. Motion by Ray Rower and a second by Geisler. Is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. So on, on that, Mr. Stemwittle, so like all of our Retirements, all of our insurance, all the, we're in a good spot on all of that, right? I mean, because every once in a while you hear those cities that didn't plan ahead, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're short, mm -hmm. they're trying to get bailed out, mm -hmm. and, and we're solid on all of that, correct? Yes, Mayor Council, um, Ms. Hansen and I are very comfortable with sort of um, our position in regard to that. We do have to pay attention each year to um, uh, both the in, in retired insurance fund and compensated absences right. fund is another one that comes mm -hmm. up. So we have to be able to cover vacation and sick leave. Um, and so we have to pay attention to that because as wages go up, the expenses mm -hmm. for that go up as well. And I think where governments get themselves in trouble is where they try to skimp too much each year on what they transfer into that. And then they get into a hole where it's, they're just mm -hmm. over leveraged on that. So we've had to be more consistent about what we transfer into those accounts so we don't run into that issue. Thank you. I've, I've always appreciated how you guys have handled that, and I guess I just kind of want to do that. Waste it, so thank you. All right, um, that is the, uh, we're up to open mic. <laughs> nope, all right. A anytime, you know you're welcome, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I don't have any reports on previous open mics, and we are to other business. Mayor Council, I'll mention one thing. This week, Anoka County is sending out 2023 property tax information as well as 24 property valuation notices. Um, so each year, the city and then Anoka County has to you know, assess properties for, in this case, payable 2024. You'll get that notice in the mail. It'll be kind of two sheets together. One of them will show next year's value information. At the end of the month in April, the City Council will meet as the Board of Adjustment and Appeals, which is our residents' opportunity to make that first step towards if they have questions or concerns about their property values. Um, first, really, they should call the city assessor's department and find out because 95% of the time, um, the assessor's department is able to explain the value changes in a way that then the resident or business owner might understand. Um, occasionally, they want to appeal that, and so the opportunity for that initial appeal is to that Board of Adjustment in appeals, which is the same members as the city council. Um, oftentimes we get through the budget process and people have concerns about their taxes. Primarily those concerns are related to their value change and there's nothing we can do about it at that time. So really this is the time to focus on your property values. If you have questions, like I said, the first step is always to call our assessor's department and get those questions answered and it's coming up. I think it's interesting to note and maybe Ms. Hansen can provide some of the details because I didn't pull it up exactly, but uh, I think homeowners will be uh, happy to hear that values um, didn't increase nearly as substantially, very flat actually, in for 2024 compared to the last several years, which have been double digits or um, high single digits. And the increases really were pushed more onto uh, commercial industrial properties, multifamily properties, and so forth. So from a single family house perspective, there has been some relief. Um, it's just the way it works. There's nothing that we can really do to control that. It's really driven by market values, home sales, and so forth. Um, but there's been a lot of years of high numbers for residential, and I think people will appreciate that. Now, each property is unique. So just because 
somebody's got a zero increase or 1% increase doesn't mean you couldn't have a 4 or 5% increase. It really depends on the factors, sales in your neighborhood, improvements you've made to your home, and so forth. So just wanted to mention that because it seems like we get into late April and we think, boy, we should have uh, messaged that a little bit more throughout the month, and this was my first crack at it. So um, last Friday, um, last Friday was uh, March 17th, big day. <laughs> And what it actually, in Coon Rapids, is the day our fire department was um, chartered in 1953. <laughs> so I would like to recognize our fire department, although we don't have any of them here tonight, <laughs> um, for 70 years of service to Coon Rapids as of March 17th. So March 17th, 1953 was when they started out. So that was kind of cool. So 70 years later, we're going to christen a new fire station. 70 years later, yeah. yes. yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. They used, to, they used to share with the liquor store down, <laughs> right. down on Coon Rapids Boulevard back when it was Highway 10. <clears throat> All right. Other business. Do we have any concerts left coming up? Mr. Mayor, yes. There is one more April 13 with the Backyard Band. Oh, that's always a fun one. Okay. Anything Mr. else? Mayor. Council Member Griscoviak. Um, I was going to ask uh, Mr. Hammer tonight about uh, street maintenance. Uh, I did get an email from Josh, our street supervisor, but uh, I think we're all seeing and getting reports that there's more potholes this year than normal. Mm. The freeze thaw has been just really bad on our yeah. roads. And uh, uh, maybe, uh, Mr. Stemwell, if you can make a comment on, I think we're going to get a little earlier start on that this year have some patience with that cold patch because it's a temporary thing. And if right. you could just maybe make a comment on that please sure uh, mayor and council yes the our opportunity to make the best fix for potholes is coming uh, we're really at the mercy of when the asphalt plants in the twin cities open up uh, because ultimately it's that asphalt that is a better i won't call it permanent fix but longer patch. term fix yep. in minnesota right now the opportunity you have is really just to fill the hole with cold patch as they call it or some sort of gravel and that's very temporary um, I think where we're seeing a lot of the major pothole concerns are in areas that are scheduled for some sort of street maintenance or reconstruction. So, mm -hmm. for example, out here in Robinson Drive, right in front of City Hall, it's, you need a moon buggy just about to get through <laughs> portions of it near the shoulder or in some of the turn lanes. Um, come this spring, as early as May, that's going to go through a mill and overlay, as Council approved that recently. I know another really difficult intersection I've seen is Coon Rapids Boulevard in Mississippi. That's going to be improved by the county this summer. So that some of those hot spots are going to be fixed more permanently. Yes, in April and beyond, we'll, we'll address those potholes that are all around town. Um, we've all been dodging them now for a good month, and I think we've got a couple more weeks before we can really start to see some improvement there. Finally, the water has gone down enough where you can see them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, like, I kept going to the right. There's one right by the car wash on Direct River Drive and Coon Rapids Boulevard, and I kept going to the right, and I kept slam, slam, and finally the water went down, and I went, oh, that's because it goes all the way over there. It's about eight feet wide. you got to go to the left of it. Mm -hmm. So you get, got to get my route. Yeah. Yeah. Council Member Geisler, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ms. You know, I, I just wanted to reiterate a little bit that Mr. Stemwell said. You know, I've seen and gotten some calls on Coon Rapids Boulevard, and that's a county road. Mm -hmm. And so while we, as it runs through our city, we need to rely on our partners at the county. And just as we need to be waiting till the asphalt plants, the county does as well. And everything that I understand, the county would be, will be out doing their patching in the same basic manner that the city will be doing it. But know that there are city crews and there are county crews that will be working in the city. Operative word. Patience, patience, yes. <laughs> and, and dodge. Yeah. <laughs> as bad as it seems right now, I've been in other communities where it's considerably worse. Oh yes. boy, I mean, we yes. stay on top of our roads, but we're still yep. going to have these issues every spring. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Any other business to come before council this evening? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Armstrong to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>